Hello everybody, I'm Clayton Crispin and today's video it's it's quite serious, it's quite not I'm not gonna talk about any manipulation, it's not how is it fake, it's not gringos who can't speak Portuguese. It is uh, uh, regarding the issue, the problem that's happening in Venezuela. And I think since I started recording videos here, I told you guys that I'm living in Ireland, that I'm Brazilian, that I do speak Portuguese, and uh, I don't know if you know, but of course, Brazil and Venezuela, they are neighbors. So they are neighbor countries. But I, but I never have told you that I met many Venezuelans here in Ireland. There are loads of Venezuelans living in Ireland and uh, I had them as classmates and I still have some of them as classmates. So they like to share. Uh, they start about some of them who had some issues uh, regarding this crisis in Venezuela that started back in 2013, 2012, before, um, even before um, the previous, the former president passed away, Hugo Chavez. And uh, the first one, it was a classmate I had. And uh, then I've been told it back in 2013 when I moved here, when I, when I, when I started studying, studying English here, one of my first classmates and uh, I've been told they could buy euros back in their countries for international students coming from outside uh, European Union. Uh, the Irish government asked for that we should carry, we should have at least 3,000 euros to, in order to have the student visa. Okay, this 3,000 euros is not for them, it's for us, but it's just to prove the government that at least you can, you can support yourself, you can make ends meet for the, for the following months until you get a job. So, uh, so what happened with these Venezuelans back in 2013, 2014, um, their 3,000 euros were gone. And uh, even though they had money in their countries, they could buy more euros in, in Venezuela because the government established a kind of a limit, a maximum limit to buy, um, to buy foreign currencies. So in this case, euros. So what happened, they, even though they had money in their countries, in their banks in, in Venezuela, they could buy euros to support themselves here in Ireland. And that was, a, that was the first issue. That was the first kind of crisis that happened here. And I remember by that time, my, my English school said a college for weeks, they asked us to bring some food. And um, so, so that's what, that was the first issue. It was really sad. Because for those Venezuelans that, that wanted to stay in Ireland, they had to, to go through this situation to get a job. So for them, uh, finding a job wasn't just a question to... It was, it was urgent, more, more urgent than for anybody else from outside Ireland or even inside of Ireland. Because even though, if, of course, if you are an European, you have some benefits here anyways. And, uh, but some of them had to go back home. And, uh, and uh, this is what happened with my, the second classmate I had when I moved away. I was studying at, at in the afternoon and I moved to study in the morning. So this, and he became a friend of mine, a very good friend. And, uh, and I remember his English was flawless. I think we were in the upper intermediate and his English was really good, was advanced. But he had to go back to Venezuela because, because of this, because he, he couldn't get more money. Even though he had money, the government wasn't allowing him to buy more euros. So, and he, he couldn't find a job. Actually, he was working temporary jobs. I think he worked for, I don't know if he worked for UNICEF here in Ireland as a fundraiser. So I'm, I'm not sure anyways, but it, it is a short period job, you know. And uh, he had to go back, unfortunately, yeah. Uh, and after that, of course, I studied with uh, others Venezuelans. Some of them could get a job here and stay. And uh, gradually, they, 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 they settled down. But uh, there were many, many Venezuelans that had to go back to Venezuela. And I'm saying again that back in 2013, 2014, even 2015, many then many of them had to go back to Venezuela, and uh, and now that the crisis 
is unbearable. They are suffering, they are starving, there are no food. There is no food there, no food at all. Uh, the situation really, really is really, really bad. I remember sending a message to this friend of mine uh, after all this period, uh, asking him how they are doing, if they are doing well, I mean, uh, well when it's possible to be well in, in a situation like this. And I remember he said, he says he's not living in Venezuela anymore, but he's living in Panama. And his parents is, is visiting his um, his sister who lives in the United States, but they're, they're there as a tourist and they had to go back to Venezuela. And the situation that is really unbearable. And I'm studying IT here, so I'm the final year in IT. And uh, one of my classmates is a Venezuelan, but it's another, I mean, I have a among Brazilians, because there are loads of Brazilians here, of course, I, I still having uh, Venezuelans, Venezuelans, Argentinians, Colombians as classmates. And I've been told that one of the Venezuelan girls, uh, I noticed that she she was really, really sad as she was, as, as she had been crying for, for a long time. And I, th I think even she lost some weight, she lost, she, I mean, she, she wasn't fat, but she, she lost a lot of weight. And then I've been told that I think her mother was sick and she, she, she was she's still working. Yeah, she was working here and sending money to her mother in Venezuela. And, uh, but anyways, I think I've been told her mother passed away. Okay. But she blames herself because she believes her mother was so depressed because of the situation that she died because because of depression she was sad so she was just you know when you're when your mind is really sad your body just perishes and it's a sad story very sad story so um this is this is a situation that i think every each one of us can walk on their shoes and think, imagine, you know, you're living in another country, you know, trying a better life, and you see your family, your friends, your loved ones in a situation like this. It's, it's just un, yeah, unimaginable, anyways. So this is it. I just would like to share this with you guys, just giving my, my, my story about this, because everybody's saying about what everybody's speaking of, it's about politics, it's about Maduro, anyways, but uh, I would like to bring you guys to the human side. And I think if here in Ireland, if you are people, you probably have already met and have already talked to, to, to Venezuelans here, but um, people around the globe might not have, never had the opportunity to talk with, uh, with a Venezuelan person, not, so they're not, you're not learning what happened in the, in the very personal level. So. I think it is important, you know, that's why I decided to, to share this, because I think it is important to tell, uh, to tell the situation that it's not only about politics, there, there is a human, there are a lot of people suffering that, and I know, of course, it is a humanitarian issue, so I think it was important and it was worth to share this story with you, okay, guys? So um, I'm not going to ask you to subscribe, to like, because I think it's not... It's not in the mood. It's not. It's not the purpose. I think if you can't share, just share the story for me. It's okay. It's it's already enough because something must be done. I think people people in Venezuela they cannot suffer this way. There are good people there. There are loads of good people. They just want a better life, and they thought they were trying. They they were opting for the best, and they are getting the worst. All right. So. Just share this video and stay well. And see you next video. Take it easy, guys. Bye-bye.